The podcast you're about to hear involves true stories, which may contain graphic content that is not suitable for children. Listener's discretion is advised. This is Esoteric Oddities. Hi, guys. Oh, we're starting? Yeah. Oh, shit. Hi. It happened. What happened? I met Aaron Carter. Yes, bitch. My life is made. I can die happy now. Except of all the bullshit that happened around. Okay, so it was a, <laughs> one of the weirdest <laughs> situations slash nights um, I've had in a really long time. By the time this comes out, I think I made a video on it. I haven't made one yet, but... Uh, by the time this comes out, it should be out on YouTube. If it is, I'll link it in the show notes where I will go into details with videos of uh, all the weird happening. My night with Aaron Carter, if you are interested. But my childhood dreams are um, fulfilled. So as you guys knew, oh, it okay. was... Well, that's that on Aaron. <laughs> as you guys knew, it was um, Jonathan's birthday last week. Um, so we went out. Um, I met them. Uh, at the bar because I live super close to Center City, Philly. So I was like, I'll just meet you guys there. My friend Trish tells me that there's these girls that are that are bothering him. Oh so my I'm God. like, <laughs> I forgot about this. not my friend. So I go in there. I push the one girl away. And I'm like, hey, are you okay? Like, and Jonathan's like, why are you coming in hot? Like, you okay, came when in I- <laughs> so hot because Trish told me that they were bothering you. They weren't, okay. They weren't bothering me. I think they might have been hitting on me at first. Yeah, she was um, like, they're being so mean to him. And I was like, screw what? No, no, they were not being mean to me. Yeah. She said they were being mean to me. Yes, that's why no. I was like, that's why I came in so hot. No, they were talking to me. I think they were kind of hitting on me. And then... They called they, um, Mark Pretty Boy. It, I, as a term of endearment, mm. I was there. Okay. It really was. Yeah, it. I was. They, were just, <laughs> they were just drunk and like... I just came in pushing f- Friendly, yeah. Right to go. Yeah, Sarah At any time. Sh- shoved these girls out of the way. <laughs> like, literally, imagine, like, okay, y'all don't know me, but, like, like four nine, barely, just coming in and, like, pushing these girls. This girl went far. She did, because, <laughs> plus, she was drunk, so. No type of, like, what is that? What do you call it? Motor skills. Motor sport. <laughs> Put that thing in sport. Sport? Um. Wow, yeah, that was weird. I totally honestly forgot that happened. And then, okay. We got an email. Oh, we did? No, I didn't tell you about this email. Oh, we got shit. a really... Oh, I'm like, yeah, we did. <laughs> a really rad email, you guys. Okay, get ready for this. Oh, so Lord. it says, good day. I know that this mail might be a surprise to you, but I plead that you take a little time to read this. If it's something you can handle, then you reply me. I work with one of the leading banks in my country, and I have worked with this bank for more than 11 years. There is an abandoned sum of money in an account belonging to one of our customers. I tried to investigate to know why the account was dormant for years without any financial operation with the account. Then I found out that the owner said the account was involved with a motor accident for which claimed his life and the life of his wife and two children, leaving no one to claim the fund of his next kin." This make the account open to anyone who can come with vi- vital information to claim the fund. If you are willing, then revert back to me with your private email ID, age, private phone number, social security number. Oh, Lord. The further confidential details are about the fund. Um, reply to me with your private email and onward process. So basically, guys, we just were granted a whole shit ton of money. Yeah, and we're going to go pick it up right now. I can't believe this for us. This is this is one of the best emails we've like, gotten. This is the only reason why we started to do a podcast. Because yeah. we were hoping that yeah. we would just get a large lump sum of money from nowhere. Something just beeped down here. I think it was the Wi-Fi. Um, and if you guys have a large lump sum of money from a different country, you can email us at oddityspodcast at gmail.com. And we would like to claim it. I will offer you any and all information needed. And I think it's a really good opportunity for all parties involved. And we'll read your email on um, on this very podcast. Speaking of mysterious letters from anonymous people, Ooh. Um, this mysterious letter is going around Fairmount. Um, for those of you who don't know, Fairmount is a city in, in Philadelphia. Yeah, whatever. It says, 
ABBA at the top. Love that band. Okay. Uh, this is to inform you that all the food ate since first grade is alive in your body, especially the dead animal remains or meat since it was cooked alive and is alive in your body. Anywhere it goes now, you must go with it. That's 365 days a year from first grade to now. Breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Also, newborn baby received your first grade body or meal just like the 365 days a year. The only way I see for you to save yourself from every which a way of being buried alive, that schedule is to become a solid steel statue by place yourself under amnesia. Anesthesia. <laughs> and mixing your body with melted metal, then re solidifying the metal or seal yourself in <laughs> cement. When it becomes real to you, you can type it up and have a lot of copies made, then pass them out and post them up. What is needed is to steal furnace where metal can be melted and bodies of people and, anima and animals mixed with the metal to become steel unable to be hurt. Of course, you'll be sedated first. There will be a meeting on April 27th, 2019 at 12 o'clock in the afternoon. We... What we need is a bulldozer to dig some ditches <laughs> and steel furnace equipment. Do attend. And we will be attending. Yeah, so that's what we got going on April, whatever that day was. Uh, what the fuck is that? That has to be... I feel like it's not... It's either a hoax or it's a mentally unstable person because, wow. But they put it in, like, every mailbox every fair amount. Yeah. Like, these are on people's doorsteps. Speaking people's doors. of animals. <laughs> oh, no, what's happening? We are just going right into it. Um, I went to the mu okay. Museum of Sex in Philly. I mean, no, New York City. Um, and it was Look amazing. Look at all these segues. It was about... Um, this coffee tastes like garbage. It tastes like garbage water. We love that for you. Um, Lenore Feeney, she was... Um, she was an artist, but she basically, like, didn't believe in any type of, like, norms, like, sexual norms, like, including bestiality, which we don't, we don't condone here. Um, <laughs> sorry, girl. Leave the dogs alone. Yeah, for real. Um, like, woman on woman, uh, sadist masochist, like, right. great, great art. And so, wait, was... is that, is that a person who's still alive? No. I don't know anything about this she person. She passed away um, January 18th, 1996. Okay, and this is like a museum of all her shit? Well, okay, so the first, the first two floors are her, and then the third floor is um, like a punk rock, like all the like sex in punk rock, which is probably, it was my favorite. Okay. And then you go to this third floor and it's like this bounce house of boobs. I saw. My girlfriend got knocked the fuck out in that. They only let you go in there for 60 seconds. Why? That's it. That's Was all there a you long get. line? There's like a line, but like all you get is 60 seconds and it's $3 per person to jump on some boobs. You got it for the gram though. 60 seconds. <laughs> you got it for the gram until they reported it. Somebody reported it. Oh my God. Some re someone reported half of my pictures and videos um, from that museum and I didn't even get to save them because they were on my Instagram. So. No, always save. That's fucking great. So, um, whatever hating ass bitch did that, you're obviously homophobic and you can get the fuck out. <laughs> Thanks. Obviously homophobic. They could just literally hate you. Watch it be somebody you did dirty back in high school that has nothing to do with this. And they're just like, one day I will get Sarah back. Probably. There's probably a lot of people one that reported like, hate me. Snapchat story. I go around time. pushing random girls. I mean. You certainly did. Wow. <laughs> but you're a great person and I love you Thanks. for that. It was, um, miscommunication. Yes. Uh, yeah, I had no idea what was going on or what she told you, but you yeah. shoved that. I thought there was about to be a fucking... I wish. Hands were about to start going. I would have threw my fucking hands. Did you see their brother? He was cute. I didn't. I, like, he was talking to you. He was talking to you, and I was just like... He was cute. Not as cute as Aaron Carter, though. We love Aaron. I love Aaron. Do you still have that video of me um, double fisting with a jacket over my... <laughs> Double fit. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Ooh, I don't know. D it's in the vlog. Did you see my vlog? Oh no, I I was trying to watch it, but I didn't know if it was the condoms one or the other one. And then the train went. The connection on the train went weird. It paused for a long time. It, it was wasn't the condoms one. Don't oh. worry, honey. Um, and for those of you wondering, I I did in fact put on twenty six condoms for my twenty sixth birthday, and you can watch that on YouTube. We love that for you. Didn't <sighs> your circulation get cut off? It sure as fuck did. <laughs> for more details, head on over to YouTube. So yeah. should we jump into these stories? I don't know who goes first. 
Uh, I will. Okay. Um, it's long. Ooh, we like a long, baby. We do like a long one. So, today's topic is unsolved mysteries. Okay. Mysteries of which Are remain unsolved. unsolved. Let's jump in. Da- I'm about to dive in. Whoa. Who's that, Toy Lanes? No. Dive in. Whoa. Who is that? That is not Toy Lane. Why is that echoing in my head right now? It's not Whoa. Ho. Whoa. Yes, it is. It's Trey Songs. Yes. <laughs> I'm a fucking idiot. <laughs> Canceled. About a week before March 31st, 1922, farmer Andreas Gruber noticed something strange on his farm. Known locally as the Hinterkaifect Farm. Um, outside the home, he found footsteps leading from the woods behind the farm pointing towards home, but none leading away from it. Gruber never reported the footsteps to the police um, as the small German farm located about 43 miles north of Munich was a relatively quiet and safe place. Now, I'm going to call it the farm because I do not feel like butchering it every time I say it. Perfect. So, um, the farm was a lonely place. It was located near the woods outside of the um, barbarian town of... Barbarian Rome. town. What is it? What is it? Bavarian. Bavarian. <laughs> Barbarian. I just pictured Dave the Barbarian. Do you remember that yes, show? Yes, I do. <laughs> um, located near the woods outside the Bavarian town of Grobern, Germany, about an hour's drive from Munch. Mun- <laughs> Munich? <laughs> <laughs> We're just unpronounceable. Go ahead. Um, an hour's drive from Munich and a half a mile behind um the town of kfic guys i'm so sorry it's so fine I, we can't pronounce this shit I, if you're offended by it like feel free to correct us but also yeah eat, please eat correct me i don't know how to say shit um i barely know how to speak the english language so it was the home of 35 year old victoria gabriel and her two children um seven year old kazilla and two year old joseph as well as her elderly parents andreas and um Kazilla. So, Kazilla was her mom, but also her seven-year-old daughter. Okay, so there's a... Named after the mom. Yeah. Okay. Um, and Andreas was the one who found the footprints. The snow footprints. Ah. Uh. The family was known for keeping to themselves. Um, still, neighbors grew um, concerned on April 1st, 1922, when um, young Kazilla... We're going to call her Kaz, everyone. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Um, when young Kaz missed school and the entire family failed to show up to church where Victoria was a member of the choir. Kaz missed school again on April 3rd and by then mail for the family had begun to pile up at the local post office. Oh God. On April 4th, the family's neighbor decided to investigate. Uh, Lorenz. Tory Lanes. I hate you. That's your answer for everything. <laughs> Lorenz Shitlinbar. <laughs> it's not funny. It's not funny. It's not funny, but like. Mm. If you have a shit in your bed, ba- <laughs> <shit laughs> name, I'm gonna shil- chuckle. Shit, Shitlinbar bear. <laughs> On April fourth, the family's neighbors decided to investigate. Um, a farmer who lived nearby, named Lorenz, uh, led the search party. What they discovered would likely haunt them for the rest of their lives. Oh, frick. In the barn, the search party found four brutally battered bodies covered with hay inside the house. Um, I have linked this picture to the um, R.I.G. and the show notes, so you'll see Oh my God. bodies covered in hay. Is um, it going to get like reported on Instagram or anything? No, it's like it's just people's feet. Oh god. Okay. I um showed it to you in an email. Okay. You Prepare yourself. What is that beeping sound? They discovered the bodies of two year old Joseph no. and the maid Maria. It had been Maria's first day on the job. The previous maid had abandoned her position due to a fervent belief that the house and farm were haunted. Oh fuck. Nearly a hundred years later, dozens of people um have been arrested as suspects in the crime, um, although no one has ever been been found guilty oh don't wait i'm sorry did you say there were four bodies or just two four bodies four people were killed okay two were killed on the farm 
mm-hmm. and two were killed in their room. Oh, okay. So, oh, okay. So you were just telling who was in the barn. Yeah. Okay, got it. The reports from the family's autopsy conducted by court physician Dr. Johan Baptiste paint a horrifying picture of their injuries. Uh, the elder, um, Kaz, which is Victoria's mother. Right. So the kid's grandma. Yeah. Uh, showed signs of strangulation and seven blows to the head, which left her with a cracked skull. Oh, fuck. The face on her husband, Andreas, um, was caked with blood and his cheekbones were protruded from a uh, shredded flesh. Uh. Victoria's skull was also smashed. Her head um, showed nine star-shaped wounds and on the right side of her face had been hit with a blunt object. The younger Kaz's lower jaw had been shattered and her face and neck covered in gaping circular wounds. Okay, wait, so there were six people, not four. There was four in the barn. Oh, okay. And then there's four in the barn and okay. then another two got in killed the in the house. Oh, I thought you said there were two in the barn. I think I did house. say that. Okay, no, I get it. I'm not going to So lie. everybody's gone. Everybody's gone. There's no, there's Survivors. no remaining well, people. Well, fuck. The elder Kaz, Andreas, and Victoria likely died instantly from... Blunt force trauma to the head. Exactly. Probably. Um, by a matic. What's that? It looks like... It's like a kind of like a pitchfork, but it's not. Uh, I'll show you a picture. Okay. Hang on, wait. I can look it up. How do you spell it? M-A-T-T-O-C. K. Oh, no. Yeah, it's like a... Like a mining fork. A pickaxe. That's not a pitchfork. Like fork. tool used for digging and chopping. Yeah, that's that shit that they use when they're mining for gold and jewels. Oh, my God. To the head. Yeah, so the... Autopsy report showed that the younger Kaz, um, she was likely alive and in shock for several several hours after her attack. Um, she had ripped her own her own hair out in clumps because she uh, was like so stressed out. Oh my god! Oh my god! So wow. inside okay. the farmhouse, Joseph and the maid Maria um, had met a similar face fate. So Maria was killed by. Um, cross wise blows to the head in her chambers and joseph by a heavy blow to the face in his cot in victoria's room like the bodies in the barn theirs were also covered maria's um with her sheets and joseph's with one of his mother's um dresses so like it's, their faces yeah okay that covered. sounds like it's potentially somebody who know them or potentially if they had more family members right. if there's something I'm just foreshadowing because that's usually what the murderer would do if they have. Well, maybe not necessarily as someone in the family, but you know when the when there's a sense of um, I don't know. That scares me more because it's like almost a sense of sanity to be like. I'm just gonna stop talking, but you get what I'm saying. It's just like a weird act to do because so if you're gonna go out and murder people, Maria you... and Joseph mm-hmm. were killed in the house. Okay, hold on. <laughs> Okay, right. And then the other four. Okay, were the kids, in, the mom, and the maid in the barn. Okay. No, no, no. The maid and Joseph were killed in the house. Okay. Wow. I'm. The grandma, grandpa, mom, and dad. There's six people. Were killed in. No, gra- grandpa and dad are the same person. I'm so lost. No, Andreas, there's okay. The little boy. Andreas is the grandfather. Okay, grandfather, go. <laughs> got it should i like redo this whole thing no no no. i'm sorry okay just give me the family tree one more time because i want to like I- i'm sorry okay. andreas i was drinking at a casino with aaron carter until like three o'clock this morning <laughs> i'm a little out of it it's so fine okay um... okay grandpa andreas he was killed in the barn in the house skirt, skirt. i just want to get this straight so i can try to piece it together and solve this mystery andreas is the grandpa okay where was he killed? In the um, barn. Barn. Kaz, the grandmother. Okay. In the barn. Got it. Victoria, mother. Mm-hmm. Barn. Okay. Kaz, the little the girl. The little girl. Barn. Okay. Maria, the maid. Mm-hmm. Um, inside the house mm-hmm. with Joseph. Nope. Not Joseph. It is Joseph. Um, the little boy. Yeah. So they the were they were both okay. killed in the house. So the grandpa and the dad are the same person. They're bitch. not the same person. They're just there's no dad. <laughs> oh, okay. I thought you were talking about Victoria's dad. Every 
every time I get confused because every time I see Victoria, I think it's Victor, and I oh okay, I just make up things. All right, got it. Okay, comprendo. I think. Should I start this whole story over? No, you're good. <laughs> you're so good. That was honestly probably me because I'm a little out of it today. I I'm, I'm like very like. I'm spacey, and for y'all, it's a fucking Monday, so I'm sure you're. Uh, yeah, you're probably shut it. the fuck up. <laughs> Just tell the story. Um. Okay, so we said they were covered with the dresses. The farm mm-hmm. animals and a Pomeranian watchdog uh, were unharmed. Y'all got a Pomeranian watchdog. They had been taken care of and fed in the several days that passed between the murders and um, the discovery of the bodies. Ah! I um, don't like that. And in the in the story, there are rumors. I'll get to it, but there are rumors that they think that the person was in the house before it happened and stayed there like after it happened. Ah. Uh. Oh no, but Pomeranian. I'm sorry. <laughs> okay. So, um, police initially suspected um traveling men of um ill reputation to have done this, like you know, like gangsters, as they would call it. Right. Um, but, or just traveling bad boys. Right. But um, tossed out the theory after large sums of money were found in the house. Besides the bodies in the hay and the bed sheets used to cover them, nothing had been disturbed. Um, though the killer clearly remained at the farm for several days, feeding the animals, eating meals, lighting fires. When the police questioned the former maid about her belief that the property was haunted, she said she had come to that conclusion after constantly hearing sounds in the attic and, in, and experiencing <coughs> no. an unsettling feeling no. of being watched. Uh, it wasn't haunted. There was somebody there was someone in, the in there. No, I don't like where this is going. Also, but I'm that re- person still didn't steal the money. I'm really confused. About the fucking Pomeranian watchdog. <laughs> well, I'm like, same. Fucking, what do you think that's gonna okay. do? I hate to say it didn't do anything, but it didn't do it anything. It didn't do anything. Um, though Andreas did not believe her, he had um confided in the neighbors about some strange happenings the day before the murder. A newspaper he did not buy was found in his house. Um, a set of footsteps were discovered leading uh leading from the forest to the farm and no s- footsteps were seen coming out of the oh, farm. Oh no. Okay, wait, wait. Before I'm sorry. I don't want to interrupt but, but I'm going to. Um I had that happen once. I don't want to specifically say it wasn't at my house. I don't want to spe- like give specifics cuz the person pr- might not want me to talk about it because of the people involved. <laughs> right. But um I was at one of my friends' houses and outside of her house it had snowed and we stayed there and her like parents were out of town and it was just me and her. And the um, there were footprints in the snow that went up to the back window and then like off the deck, and they were like fresh footprints. Shut the fuck so, like, up! I know some, who it was. Someone walks up in the snow and walks to I feel the like window. Something weird would happen around her house like that. I don't trust. And then like walked off the property. Like so, like how horrifying is that to find that in the morning? They looked in the window. And then while yeah, while while nobody in the house knew. Ew. I know how much you hate. Okay, I was just gonna say you know how I feel about people looking at me through windows. I do not like. I'm sorry. So continue. Uh, so an even more strange incident was that one of the family's two keys disappeared shortly before the murder. So, combined with the footsteps from the woods, sounds in the attic, a strange newspaper, and a smoky chimney in the days following the crime, the odd details paint a horrifying picture for a ruthless intruder who may have taken up residence in the house. And was running the fucking chimney while the family was dead. Um, so, suspicion eventually settled. Hold on, I have a question, really quick. Yeah. When they found the bodies, did they say how long that the bodies had been sitting there for? Did they, they have, like, an idea they of, They said like... a couple of days. Okay. Because it was... It happened on March 31st. April 1st, um, Kaz didn't show up to school. Okay. Um, April 2nd, they didn't go to church. April 3rd, uh, the mail was piling up. April 4th, they went uh, Okay, so, like, to... four-ish to three yeah. and a half, four days. Yeah. Okay. Um, suspicion eventually settled um, on several men connected to the family because of domestic turbulence at the farm. Victoria was a widow um, whose husband died in World War I, and no one knew who the father of her son Joseph was. Oh. Um, she had a relationship with Lorenz, the guy that, the neighbor who made the search right. party. Mm-hmm. 
and they both publicly referred to Joseph as their child. They planned to get married until Andre- Andreas interfered, and their relationship ended. Uh, oh, so that was before. Yeah. Uh, Lawrence eventually Wait. married okay. someone else, and uh, though he and his wife welcomed a baby, it uh, died a few weeks later. Police thought that Lawrence was a suspect. They, The theory was that uh, he was traumatized by the death of his baby, and uh, he was unwilling to pay uh, support for Joseph. He had to come to the farm to kill them all. The old, uh, if I lose one, I lose them all. Um, the theory kind of started because um, during the initial investigation, they found his behavior suspicious. Uh, they said he had acted nonchalant, viewing and handling the bodies without a sign of repulsion. He also knew his way around the farm. Uh, the police questioned Lorenz extensively, but were unable to conclusively place him um, at the scene of the crime. They said that his behavior could be explained by shock and they reasoned with him um and his knowledge of the farm was from his relationship with okay Victoria. right right you can fucking reason that as to be like well yeah but that also means that he would know his way around where the, the fucking farm were, like, what the where, fuck yeah right there's like no he only knows his way around the farm because he did that doesn't make any sense to me if, okay I, so I get what you're saying though with well i didn't say it. this is just a theory no i know but that's what they are saying yeah no. This is also like 1922, so like yeah, I'm I've been staring at this picture of a Pomeranian, wondering how the fuck somebody <laughs> purchased it and said this is going to be my guard dog. Yeah. Um. Well, it was like a really small town. Yeah, with a really small dog. Yeah, maybe they were like, we don't need like a big dog. We just need like a yappy here. bitch. Yeah. The size of a loaf of bread. With um, Lauren's eliminated police considered Victoria's husband. Uh, Carl Gabriel, a suspect. The theory that he is that he came back from the war and killed them. Uh, the theory didn't last long because they discovered that Carl had been reportedly slain in France almost a decade before, with many of his uh, fellow soldiers um, seeing his body. Another theory floated at the time that Joseph was actually the child of Victoria and her own father, Andreas, <gasps> and that one of them had killed the entire family before turning. Um, the Matic on themselves. Oh my God! Um, Andreas's. Who came up with that? And then it's probably the same person who was like, "Oh yeah, that guy who lives across the street." Well, there was a with. lot of rumors that Andreas had a thing for incest and uh, and abuse, and they were frequently discussed in the town. Okay, but but to okay, but to turn a Matic is it a Matic? Yeah. On yourself? Excuse my titties. Yeah. What the frick? I don't know. I don't- <laughs> A thump, thump, thump. Like, if you're going to go out, it's probably not going to be that way. Because I feel like after the first hit, you probably, like, like, rendered unconscious. Right. You you don't have the mental capability to pick that thing up and do it seven more times to your face until the flesh comes back in you. That theory is canceled. Well, okay. Okay, it's not canceled, but, like, to me, it's moving down the the list. So... (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> but form your they own. They just get worse and worse. Oh my god! Form your own onions, guys. This um, is just my personal there was humble rumors onion. That Andreas had other children with Kaz besides Victoria, but she was the only one to survive his violent hands into adulthood. But none of the injuries to the bodies could explain could be explained as self inflicted, so it wasn't possible that the crimes were murder suicide, portrayed perpetrated by Victoria or Andreas. Unless. Andreas killed everybody in the family. And then the dude who was living in the attic was like, oh, Lauren, no. Lawrence. Yeah. Was like, I'll kill you to make it look like nothing. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and then the dude's like, thanks for doing this, fam. I got you. Um, There were allegations of incestuous relationships between Andreas and um, his daughter, Victoria. Seven years before the residents of the farm were murdered with a mattock, Andreas and Victoria were convicted of incest in 1915 uh she served one month in jail for the crime while her father was sent away for an entire year wow there's a lot going on yeah small town big drama okay i think we have a title ladies oh uh well many people believe victoria's two-year-old son joseph was the child of lorenz a man who lived near the family um some of gruber's neighbors believe that the child was a product of andrea's incest relationship with his daughter. Yes. Uh, this would imply that the father and daughter continued having sex with each other years after being convicted of incest. The true identity of Joseph's father remains a mystery to this day. Okay, so uh, p- interesting. I'm not done yet. 
No, I know, but were they thinking that it was like consensual, like um, Victoria was participating in this as well, or was it like abuse on the father's behalf? They, I guess. I guess in the, this specific case, they said right. that she was participating because it went on for so long. Okay, yeah, but I mean, she could have been like abused for so long. But also, since you're, there's no proof of this. It's just like right. speculation. Have y'all anyway. seen abducted in plain sight? I have not. Is oh it good? God. I've heard mixed things. I've heard very mixed <laughs> things. I've heard it's really fucking awful. And it's, I've heard it's really fucking good. It's good if you literally want to like slam your head against a fucking wall. Because oh, I was going to bring my Matic and slam it <laughs> against my head. Thanks. Because in the one part, sorry, spoiler alert. Oh, wait, wait, don't, don't, don't. Because I feel like a lot of our listeners are going to want to watch it that haven't watched it. Okay, just go watch it. Yeah, everybody, it's your bizarre. homework is to go watch it. If you think the story it. is bizarre, go watch it. Mm. All right. Um, only thing that could be stated with any degree of certainty was the crimes had been committed by someone who knew their way around the farm, as evidence continued. Tory Lanes. Who? What's that guy's name? I keep forgetting. Lorenzo. Lorenz. Lorenz. Sorry. As evidenced by the continued upkeep after the murders and the exact after the murders and by the expert motion of the Matic. Okay. Okay. So the man or woman knew their way around a mattock. Okay. So what did Lorenz, what was he doing on these days? Like, can he account for him? We don't him? know. The, mm. the brutality Weird. of the murder suggests that they had been committed by someone with a personal vendetta against the family. Okay. And I've seen V for vendetta. Okay. That's a big word. Uh, the police at the time failed to come up with answers and eventually closed the case. With what? They closed the case or they just let it go cold? How, you can't. No, they didn't close the case. They just let the shit go cold. They were like, let's put that on the back burner until it's too fucking soggy to put in the fridge. That's basically, fucked up. Basically. There's like children involved here. So um, the farm case had been reopened several times in the last. However many years it's been. Yeah. Hundred years. Uh, even uh, clairvoyants have tried uh, given a chance. At it. Right. They're grasping. Yeah. They're really reaching here. Uh, there was a book called The Hinter Calcfect Farm, and the author, Peter, details how the bodies of the Gruber family and the maid were beheaded not long after the original autopsies, and the skulls were sent to the town where they were examined by a metaphysical, examined for metaphysical clues. Sadly, the skulls did not speak. Jesus Christ. Um, in 1923, the farm was demolished, and the family lays buried without their heads in a plot uh, um, in uh, Wadehofen. The skulls were lost during World War II and never returned. How do you lose them? Um, initial evidence gathered at the crime scene is either lost or too ancient to give up any secrets. Oh my god, those heads are out there somewhere. Rolling. Uh, I just picture a whole family, like sorted out in one big coffin from tallest to smallest That's without heads yeah in 1999 one of america's better years in 1999 an elderly woman contacted the authorities claiming her former landlord admitting to having information about the farm killings officials investigated this tip and learned that the landlord supposedly made this claim in 1935 however it was too late as the potential suspect mentioned in the lead was no longer alive in 99 yeah but they can still pursue that to try to put the case together right who was the person they didn't say <gasps> she's like by the way my landlord is in, tory lanes <laughs> in 2007 more than 80 years after the Gruber family and their maid were killed. Students at a German police academy used modern um, techniques to investigate the unsolved case. The students ruled out all but one suspect they believed committed the murders at the farm. However, the suspected killer is dead, so they didn't publicly name the person that they think is responsible for the massacre out of respect for the suspect's relatives who are still alive. Can I just say, I really... And that is the case. That's fucking crazy. So nobody fucking knows. Well, I guess it is because nope. today's topic is Unsolved Mysteries. Can I just say, I appreciate fucking students out here grinding with their teacher. Oh, wait, those that was not the right... I meant, okay, you get what I'm saying. Like, the students are, oh my God, I didn't mean like that. Lord. <laughs> students are out here, Why like, take a whack at it? working with their teachers to, like, solve this case, even though it's really old. Like, yeah, cases have been solved from know. students like that. Young and ambitious. I love it. Keep it up. Honestly, though, because then no one would fucking know. The bit, honestly, I want to know what evidence they came up with that, like, 
made them not believe that it was Lorenz. Lorenz. I feel like, I don't know, I can't find the name anywhere because like they said, they this person still has relatives. Okay. Um, cannot disclose. I'm sorry, did you say what he did? Who? Lorenz. He, no, he was just a farmer. Okay, so he was a farmer. Um, I wonder if he had some like political stature or some like sense of like well It could be that town. he found out that maybe Joseph wasn't his. It was actually the dad's and he was pissed. Yeah, I, I know, but I'm just trying to figure out because he's my top suspect. I just want to know what why the police and investigators didn't like really go after him. Right. Because it seems like pl- like the only plausible thing is that it would have been him. Do you know what I mean? Right. Like, I want to know them. where he was if they were really invested. Like, where the fuck was he right. in the time that the whole shit happened four days like april what was it april 1st through the 4th like yeah. where was he those what was days he doing? yeah i'm saying did they search his house to see if he had a key did they try to look at the boot prints and be like wow that's a sketchers size 12 and he happens to have a sketchers size 12 in, in his, his closet look at that no questions that need answers and probably won't get them because that was fucking years ago jesus christ that's a whole family that was how many people five people six people six Five family members and one maid. Yeah. Wow. That's fucked up. Grandma, grandpa, mom, two kids, maid. Yeah. That was really good. That's frustrating, though. Okay. I was reading it like, what do you mean? There's no person? (laughs) I feel like there has to be more behind it. There has to be. Because I feel like... I feel like there's not because it was 1922. No, 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 no. Not more like information. I mean, more like... I feel like politics were involved or there was some some sort of payoff somewhere. Oh, I see. Because I, to me, like the re- I feel like it could have been so. I don't know. Maybe Lorenz. I just don't know the information. Right. I'm not gonna say it's him, but like, allegedly, I'm gonna finger him. Oh. Not like that. You know how people are just like when someone they're blaming someone, they're like, "I'm gonna finger you." <laughs> Why do we say that? I'm gonna. Yeah. F- <laughs> who says that? I'm gonna finger Tori. Lanes. My fingering is something totally different, sweetheart. Hmm. Well, thanks for sharing. That was a good one. I'd never heard of Things. that. Thanks. Oh my god, yes. That was good. It just it blows my mind because I think I know so much about so many crazy. Oh my shit god, and that they're happens. like, "Skirt, oh, then, you said you didn't do it. Okay, that's." Fine. You pull that shit out of thin air, and I'm like, "How does so many crazy shit happen?" That and that happened so long ago. It's like, how did I not hear about that? It's just like crazy, weird, scary shit. We live in a crazy world. I almost did the. I probably shouldn't. Say yeah, that. don't because do it for another episode. Right. Yeah, um, but it was like. It's not a long one. I, you can do like two smaller ones. Okay. Are you ready for mine? Because Ingrid. mine is one. Ooh, ooh. Oh, wait. Hold on. No, I'm going to tell a story really quick before I jump into this. So let me tell you about what happened to me oh, this morning. Lord. I was going to tell this short story at the top of this show, but we had a lot going on. We sure did. It was just like a salad of chaos. It was my segment. Yeah. That's that on this whole life. Okay. <laughs> um, okay. So I woke up. Um, How do I explain this? I have... You know, the, those like tinsel things. I know yeah. you know, but like the tin. Well, h- help me explain it. Okay, it's, it's like, like um, it looks like s- a curtain. Yeah, it's but like, it's not. F- oh, <laughs> and that's all you get. <laughs> <laughs> it's like floor to ceiling tinsel. If you've seen my videos, I use it as a background. I have it up in my kitchen. Kind of like what you would use. Oh. that's like a in like a photo shoot. Yeah, like it's um, like um, it's if like you guys sparkly. Yeah, yeah. If you guys saw um our esoteric oddities fucking um uh, drink drinks video. on yeah. halloween which is up on youtube youtube.com slash esoteric oddities we filmed it there it's like uh people use it for photo ops anyway you get it it's like tinsel it's like strips of fucking you fucking get it you fucking get it um so i have one of those in my room it's a smaller one and it's blue because i use it um when i'm filming and it's in a corner of my room where there's no window it's like kind of I was closet. confused when you told me that because i was like wait he Where doesn't he have one in his room okay so but i do i, I do it it's used blue. to be it used to be back there but i cut it and i brought it upstairs because i was like it's literally sitting here on the floor why am i not using it I love that. anyway it's upstairs in my room and my window is closed and uh i wake up this morning i was a little hungover i stood up and i started walking over to my dresser to get a pair of socks as i'm walking to my dresser to get a pair of socks i <sighs> That scared the shit out of me. What is that? I don't know. It beeped at a really bad time. I watch the bottom of this fringe. Like, it looks like someone's hand just goes like this and moves all of the fringe. Skirt! 
all the Take way it down. across Take it down. this nope. fucking background like nope. thing. Nope. Take it down. I stood there. I checked my window. Window closed. My door was closed. There is no draft going through the house. Not a single window in this Are house. Are you sure is... there's not a draft? 100%. You don't have the heat on? We don't have vents. We don't oh. have air vents like your house. Oh. We have the fucking radiators. Oh, right. <laughs> There's no, nothing that could have moved it. Ooh. And when I say I looked at it and it looked like somebody's hand was like ran across it. Like if you guys ever run your hand across here, some bitch. fucking fringe, that's what it looked like. But there was nobody there. And I looked at it and the thing was my cat looked at it too. I would have been like, Skirt. I would have ran downstairs. I just pretended it didn't happen. And then no. I walked close to it to get my socks out of the thing. I don't, nothing really weird has happened in this house for a long time. It's been like pretty much since the summer, since somebody moved out yeah look at that but i have to say it was fucking weird it didn't give me like a bad feeling but it... yeah it's just like i know something's here type shit and i was also watching videos of that girl who i was watching videos of when the vodka bottle flew off the top of my fridge and oh, when that happened skirt. i was watching her videos like yeah, while the ghost this happened like her yeah and it was her ghost videos too canceled okay um that's lowey lane <laughs> Don't. She's not canceled. She's cool. But I mean, like, it, I don't know why. Your it ghost just triggers. is canceling her. It's probably me. It's probably like my Matilda ass powers. Right. <laughs> me Fucking carrot. Me staring at a carrot it's trying to make it flow. my favorite part. I remember I had to, um, I got detention in middle school. I had to sit at the special table too. Because I had a, a baby carrot oh, right. and I squeezed it so hard because it, they would shoot at people. Right. And I thought it was funny. So I went to shoot it at my friend across the table, like across the, the cafeteria. Yeah. And it hit a fucking teacher's aid. I <laughs> cannot. Who threw a bat? Yeah. And everybody was like, it was him. <laughs> I feel like. Yeah, they fucking. All, they fingered me. My friends fingered me. <laughs> they said it was him. You should just put that as the title. As this. my friends fingered my me. My friends fingered me. Maybe it'll be. Uh, uh, that'll be. Yeah. Maybe I'll put it in parentheticals. <laughs> my friends fingered me. <laughs> I can't believe people call it that. Like, I get it, but like. Yeah. I yeah, especially when you're talking about like murders and cases. Right, it's like, just let's like let's not. be professional okay. here. I guess it's us who should be professional because that's don't know just how. where our minds go. I All think right. it's literally like plain to see in my whole career that I do not know how to be professional. Yes, you do. One time you wore tights that didn't have runs in them to work. <laughs> it was one time. They probably got a run in them <laughs> that day. <laughs> Damn, your fucking tights forever be running like Forrest Gump. Okay. All right. So this story is about Ada Constance Kent. Do you know of it? Nope. Okay. So this is a weird one. Uh, strap on. And it, uh, again, this is one of those stories that I tried to look for other podcasts that did it. I found one seemingly solid podcast. Ugh, I don't want to call them out, but I found... <clears throat> Excuse me. I found one podcast. I listened to it and they had uh, quite a lot of misinformation from what, what I called? found. I don't want to I'm call them sorry. out like that. I'm okay. Don't do that. I'm not throwing shade. I'm just saying the one podcast I listened to had a lot of misinformation because I found like actual scanned uh, fucking newspaper articles from back then. And anyway, Vos. So um, Ada Constance Kent was also known as Connie Kent. So I'm going to call her Connie because that's what she went by. Connie. <laughs> i'm gonna take a shot every time you repeat me <laughs> i'm ready for it okay so she was born in 1871 in england and she why does my voice sound low does it sound low it's probably because you're hungover i'm not like that hungover i can't believe i'm aaron carter let me start this over so ada constance <laughs> kent was also known as connie kent i'm gonna call her connie so she was born in 1871 in england and was raised by her mother helen and her grandmother mary so for a girl who would ultimately end up in the limelight, her life is kind of one giant mystery. Okay. And I guess back then it was kind of easy if you at some point became famous later in life that it would be harder to dig up shit in your past because it was the 1800s, oh, yeah. the late 1800s. So anyway, um, so she followed her passion for acting and she took to the stage in the late 1800s. She was not a massive success, but she was a somewhat successful stage actress. So then she took to the big screen in early years of cinema. Um, she went by her stage name, which was Vera Verchale. 
Um, but this is not supported by the British film archive records. So like anywhere, it doesn't really use that name. You know how like Marilyn Monroe had Marilyn Monroe. Oh, right, right. Um, but this was kind of her like fancy stage name that wasn't really credited in film credits. Um, so after a long period of working in London as an actress, Connie moved to the English countryside to Fring... Oh, sorry. Fing Ring... Oh, my God. <laughs> I'm telling you it's hard. Fing Ring Ho, Essex. Wait. Fing Ring. F-I-N-G-R-I-N-G. Fing Ring Ho? Yeah, it's like Fing Ring Ho. One word. Fing Ring Ho, Essex. Um, so at the time when she moved there, she was pretty wealthy. She was unmarried. We love that for her. We love a wealthy single woman. Yes. And her house. Oh, my God. It's so cute. I'm going to put up a picture of it. She lived alone in a luxurious three-bedroom cottage. It wasn't, like, huge, but it was, like, luxurious on the inside, you know? That's the best. Like, when you're like, hey, look at my teeny tiny house. Yeah, it's like. You bring your friends in. You're like, got you, bitch. (laughs) I'm acting like I like have no, I tons of houses like that. <laughs> That's the best. You have one in fingering hoe. That's true. Um, so uh, at this point when she moved there, Connie was, you know, recluse and she seldom mixed with others. She had some friends, but she kind of liked to Did stay her to herself. Me. Yeah. Mm-hmm. She, well, I pretty much already said that, but I have another note. So I feel like it's necessary to say she didn't really leave her house. She had friends, not many friends, and she was rarely ever seen outdoors. Um, also, Forgot to mention this. By this time, when this story is about to take place, when she's living in her cottage, she was 68 years old. Oh, shit. So Connie had been, uh, she pretty much shut everybody out of her life. When one of her friends got worried after three months had passed and she had not seen Connie. So the unnamed friend went to Connie's cottage. That's a cute name for like a little restaurant, Connie's Cottage. Connie's Cottage. Love that. Um, So she went to Connie's Cottage, knocked, nobody answered. So the friend let herself in. Um, She said that the door was unlocked. So the woman walked around the house and found nothing out of place. However, Connie was not in the house. So that day, a friend had reported her missing. She said that she had last seen Connie on March 6th of 1939. And then another man kind of chimed in and he corroborated the story. So this man's name was Alfred J. Hassler, and he was the landlord of a local public house, which was called Whalebone Pub. We love that. We love a whalebone. Um, And he said he saw Connie that day, that same day, um, March 6th, that the friend had reported seeing her. Uh, He said she came into the Whalebone Pub to get cigarettes. Uh, He said she would usually stop in every few days. Connie would say hello to Alfred and bartenders. She would buy her cigarettes and go. Uh, She wouldn't really stay and drink. She wouldn't really engage in small talk too much. There was nothing really off about her, but she was just like polite and kept to herself. She's like, hi, how are you? Grabbing my cigs. Get the fuck out. Bye. Don't talk to me. I feel that, Connie. Um, Me too. But on March 6th, 1939, when she came in, uh, this Alfred guy told police that she looked ill that her skin was kind of grayish and she wasn't looking healthy and she was coughing badly. Um, However, he said that day she didn't talk to him. And she usually did, right? She usually said hello, but she kind of just was hacking up along while she went to go get more Virginia Slims, probably. I don't think they have those in England. Anyway, Uh, then there's this guy named Robert G. Winkle. He was a gardener for a nearby church. And he said that he had seen a light on the cottage after she was reporting, after she was reported missing. So that man, along with a police officer named Bernard Constable, went to the cottage. When they got there, the door was unlocked. <gasps> um, also important to note, reportedly, Connie, Connie's friend was last there. And it wasn't clear if she locked the door on her way out or if, like, oh. it, what happened. Right. But the front door, again, was, was unlocked. Open. Um <clears throat> they saw food was on a tray with a teapot and a cup. Oh, shit. Um, there was an, an open, overturned copy of Romeo and Juliet that was... So, like, if you're reading a book and, like, something you happens, like down. if somebody knocks on your door, yeah. for instance, and you're reading a book, you, you flip, flip it, it over, over and you're going to be like, be right back. Right. Unless but you don't come BRB. back. Yeah. Um, so the Romeo and Juliet book was flipped over by the fireplace and they said, I don't really know what this is about, but they said an oil lamp looked like it was out of place. 
That's like they would know where she put exactly. her Exactly. But it's fine. It's fine. And her one coat that she commonly wore was still on the coat hook. Just a reminder, it was March. It was cold. And the last time um, that she had been seen was like around that time. So it ain't hot out. Right. And she needs a coat. Yeah. Um, yeah. So the cop and this gardener guy, they didn't really find anything. Also, I don't know why the cop brought the, the gardener. I guess it was a different time back then. But um, they Maybe said. Maybe he's the only one that knew her or knew the house. No, the friend did, but they didn't bring the friend in. Weird. There was no bad smell. There was no sign of anything awry. Right. So the case went cold. It's just better be awry. <laughs> so three years later, in 1942, her male friend, Connie, one of Connie's male friends, his name is George Winkle. The, okay, whoa, that's weird that I say that because the other guy, his name was Reuben Winkle, like w-i-n-k-l-e and this guy's name was george winkle but it's w-y-n-k-o-l-l oh winkle Ooh, winkle winkle little star so i'm fingering winkle <laughs> aren't we all uh, so <laughs> george winkle connie's friend not the gardener went to this is so random by the by we'll come back to this three years later case is cold George Winkle goes to Connie's house to search the house. I don't know. He had some thought. He was just like. So wait, she dies. And no, she's not dead. She's okay. missing. Okay. She's reported missing. And when the cop and the gardener go, they go. They can't find her. They can't find her. They her. search around town. She's reported missing. And the case goes cold. Nobody knows what happened to her. So three years later, her house is still like kind of untouched. Right. And the, her friend comes over and there's no report on why he really did this. But he broke into the locked front door, searched for clues in the house, but he found nothing. He said it was as if she had just up and left and then never came back. Uh, and again, the case remained cold. So that was kind of a weird fact to be like three years later, another dude broke in. Then was like, yep, nope, story checks out. Right. <laughs> it just looks like I thought that was weird. OK, so then let's fast forward to March 1949. We are now another winkle. <laughs> possibly. We are now ten years after Connie had gone missing. Lord. So a bank called the police. Oh Lord. And the bank was like, Hey, police, we need to talk about Connie in regards to her account. <gasps> I'm not sure if they knew she was missing. I think they did. That's why they were calling the police. Right, right. They were like, we tried calling all phone numbers associated with her. Or like, like, we tried mailing things with anything associated with her. And we haven't gotten anything back. The bank was like, there's large sums of money being deposited into her account for the past 10 years. And nothing's been withdrawn. Uh, so the last huge deposit was in 1949 which was a couple months prior to the bank calling um so that date was nine years after she went missing so i'm blown away my only thought would be like residuals because she was an actress but i don't think it works like that right. they didn't have direct not deposit 10 like years that later not in 1948 is what i'm saying 1948 exactly so police were like wow this is a huge break she has to be out there like doing something putting money in her account don't know how she's getting money if she's not withdrawing out but she's making money she's out there like okay th this is something so 10 years later in early summer of 1949 they searched the cottage again because this is kind of all they have to go They're off just of. like, let's just keep looking at her house <laughs> They're just the proof like, is in the pudding maybe something will pop up so they saw the romeo and juliet book was now gone yeah, but there's been several people in and yeah, out of her uh, house we'll for years back. now. So like, however, all, beep. I'm right. tired of it. <laughs> Did you just mimic yes. my, my beeping? Out? Yes. Okay, so Romeo and Juliet book was gone. However, all of her expensive jewelry had still been in there, despite how many people had gone. So they go to the bedroom. They didn't do this before. They did. They didn't find anything. Oh. But now they're just going around the house. They go to the bedroom. And laying next to the bed was an undressed human skeleton. <gasps> next to the skeleton was a bottle with a label reading poison. So, it sounds like crazy and fictional, right? No. So, the skeletal remains were sent to Scotland. And everyone in the media reported Ada Constance um, Kent was found... 
But there's so much mystery here because she was missing for 10 years. The police go back to her house after the bank calls. And this one time they happen to find her dead body. So since there was no muscle or flesh or anything, they couldn't prove with 1949 technology that the death was um, that the cause of death of this person was actually poison, nor could they prove that uh, if it was caused by poison, if that person had voluntarily consumed it, or if that person was killed and it was staged to look like. Because so many questions. Just a bottle that says poison on it. I picture the skull with the X's. Um, so then, the a fucking uh, skeletonologist or whatever they're called. I cannot. <laughs> uh, noticed that there were no major bone fractures uh i'm gonna really quick read a clip from the british newspaper archive which was dated uh july 8th 1949 so this was what was being published then so uh quote the mystery surrounding tumble down church cottage at whaleborn corner fring ring fring fing ring ho was only half solved at yesterday's inquest in the crowded courtroom at Witham. Mr. Joseph Glover, foreman of the jury, told Deputy Coroner of the Northeast Essex that while he and his colleagues agreed that the yellowed bones lying on the clerk's table in the courthouse were that of former actress Ada Constance Kent, age 69, they could not say where or when the death took place. The cause of death is un known. Before the police took an interest in Miss Kent's disappearance from the cottage in 1939, children running in and out of the place during the war years had discovered bones. Now age 21... Oh, so now no one said anything. Now, yeah, now age 21, Derek Edward Allen told the jury how when he was 12, he and his friends had climbed through the cottage window. They had seen bones under the bed, uh, but they did not once think they were human. He said they thought that they were just animal bones. And that's very possible because, like, animals kind of were going in and out of her house. And this was a full-on, like, human skeleton. And if there were little kids climbing through the window, they would have recognized a human fucking okay. skeleton. Um, so whoever did it was planting the skeleton. Well, I don't know. So what's more motherfucking strange, you ready to get weirder? I'm right was due to the age and size, the skeletal remains were proved not to be Connie Constance I knew Kent. it. It was a male skeleton. I knew it. So a few days after that previous newspaper article was printed, another one was published, and it said, <laughs> Expert medical evidence given by Dr. Francis Camps, uh, who was the county pathologist, not the skeletonologist, as I refer to him prior, um, as per my prior mistake. Me. <laughs> <laughs> I want that tattooed as per my prior mistake. <laughs> Me. Um, so Me at work. The path- <laughs> So the pathologist, um, he demonstrated that the similarity between what he and his colleagues had discovered versus what Ada Constance Kent actually, like, who she actually was. They were like, oh, shit, this is not a woman. Like, Look at that. This is, uh, is I actually... feel like you can, like, see that. Yeah, I, f- I do feel like, you know, that's kind of a little obvious around the hips, possibly, right. yeah, yeah, even yeah. if a woman hasn't had a child. But I'm Insane. no skeletonologist. Me so. neither. I'm no skeletonologist. Um, so, you know, they said there was no in Once again, there was no injury to the bones. There was no sign of strangulation or poisoning. And, um, I think the person placed it there as like a, hey, this is Loki. What happened? I poisoned her. Um, she is decaying somewhere. Kind of suspicious as she was reading Romeo and Juliet. Oh, wow. I didn't even put those two together. Look at you, Detective Sarah. So maybe it was like a man that she was dating that like yeah, we- the other guy got jealous and poisoned them both. And oh that's shit! The skeleton, the man she was dating, <sighs> and there's this vicious stalker man out there that killed her and this guy, and that's the skeleton there. I love that theory, Sarah. Detective. Sa- okay, <gasps> am I on to something or yes, what? I'm is- fingering myself. <laughs> <laughs> we need to knock it off. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Wow, that's really good because you just came up with like a story. Of what happened that she's yeah she was murdered but she's still missing and then the extra body came from the other dude and uh, wow interesting yeah 
Okay. So, uh, yeah, I mean, that's basically all I have for the case. I wish there was more. But again, what we were talking about before, there were so many people in and out of that house. The door was like locked, unlocked, locked, unlocked. Like, what the fuck? It was on a main road also. It was right right by the pub. The kids can easily get through the window. Then other people can get through the window. I want to see a picture of her house. Okay. I will send it to you. Um... So uh, other people with literally the the possibilities are endless. She could have been kidnapped if she was reading the book by someone random, murder, suicide, tragic accident. People said dementia, possibly, you know, really it's possible. She was pushing 70. That's true. Yeah. But um, why would she be coughing like that all of a sudden? Well, I don't know. I have no idea. Yeah, maybe somebody was, maybe she was ill because someone was slowly poisoning her. That's what I feel like. Wow, I actually really like your theory. Thank you. That was pretty bomb. Look at you doing shit. I know, right? You're so smart, Barnacle. Thank you. Oh, as real, a side note, I was just thinking that it's weird that, like, the house is easy to get into, but, like, her jewels and some money was still in it. Yeah, that's what I was confused about, too. It's just confused as to, like, why people wouldn't take it, especially if there were, like, kids coming in. Right. Uh, maybe later on they, it was stolen. But um, you guys, if you liked this case, I would strongly recommend listening to one of our earlier, earlier episodes, episode 25. We did back in early 2018. I think it might have been last Yikes. January. Um, it, we did it with our friend Kiko. And uh, my story was about a drag queen who died an unfortunate death. Do you remember this? Yes. And um, her friends had to go clean out the apartment. And when they did, they found something really fucked up. And it's got really strange elements that uh, surround this case. Um, So that is our episode 25, which is aptly named Skeleton in the Closet. Look at that. So if that intrigues y'all and you haven't listened to our older shit, maybe point your penises that way. Oh, look at that. Not your fingers. (laughs) What's with us today? Uh, Okay. I do have a tweet of the week. It's on my phone, though. Hold on. Hold, please. Okay, so... (laughs) This is so stupid. Okay, so mine... I have kind of two. It's like a tweet and then the retweet. The reply. Got it. Yeah, the reply. So this first uh, tweet comes from Joe underscore Debella, and he says... (laughs) I can't even look at this. (laughs) I cannot. Stop making fun of me. I'm not. Um, okay, it says, best part of my divorce, finally being able to put my Rainforest Cafe talking Tracy tree back in my living room where you she go, rightfully belongs. Rainforest Cafe comments and says, you do you, Joe. Oh, we love that. <laughs> Get it. I think I saw that too. I was dying. I was literally like crying, laughing, and it, oh my god! It's, Who wants that? I, I don't. Just, I thought he's like best part of my divorce. I can put this talking because I want to be a fly on the wall when they had their first argument, where <laughs> his now ex wife was there. His now ex wife was like, "Joe, we cannot have Tracy the tree from Rainforest Cafe." Tracy in tree our probably kitchen. always sided with him. That's probably why she hated her. <laughs> Oh, my God. Is Rainforest Cafe making a comeback? Because Grace Helbig and Mamrie Hart talk about them a lot. Wait, Rainforest Cafe is the best place I've ever been. I haven't been there since I was a kid. It's magical. Right, because it rains in there. I literally got so scared the first time. I was like... Yeah, there's a lot going on. Yeah, there is. That fucking gorilla. It's a lot. Anyway, my tweet of the week is from um, Notorious... Allie, um, she says, this year, y'all need to give yourselves permission to be happy now, not later. Stop seeking excitement from the future events and temporary pleasures. If not, you'll be filling a void all your life. Shift your shift your focus from the outcome to watching yourself grow, okay? Yes. And that's sad on that, because I do that a lot. I'm like, oh my god, like, I'm not doing anything right now, but, like, this one thing is coming up and it's so exciting. Like, I just need to not. Yeah. I like that. That's good advice. That's a good uh, thing. That's a good thing. <laughs> I was very thing. passive Thanks. about that. Yeah. No, you know what I mean. You know it's what a I good mean. Thing. I'm sorry. My brain is, like, on 48% yeah, right same. now. I also woke up really early, so I think I fell asleep around. I slept in the car. I almost pissed my pants. That's amazing. And then I woke up. I want to say we got home around, like, 2 <laughs> I deadass fell asleep at, like... 9 30 i fell asleep on my girlfriend's shoulder and i remember waking up in a like puddle of drool and i was like i'm sorry (laughs) (laughs) 
I literally was running around a casino like a fucking Mary Kate Nash. No, movie, you were living your best to life. Hunt down Aaron Carter. I found him, by the way. Uh, wow, that sounded really creepy. But my fun <laughs> fact is that Aaron Carter produced his new album. Oh, I love that. He like video. he didn't just write the songs. He like he had like a co-producer, but he pretty much put everything together. And y'all, <clears throat> I swear, like I showed Sarah like some of his some of his new songs. The album's called Love. It's y'all good. need to go listen to it because it's like it's Show really pretty love. good. He's been through enough. Love. He really has, and good for him. Good on him. He was so nice and just like genuine and appreciated people. And then his being Instagram there. got hacked. Oh yeah, his Instagram got hacked this morning. We thought he was like blocking everybody. Um, we're gonna figure that out later. Uh, my fun fact. Okay, I hope that picked up. I heard it in my ears. Wow. What was it? I don't know. Did you hear that? Yeah. Yeah. Pickles? Okay. No, we're fine. Everything's on that side. Absolutely fine. I, I have sage upstairs. It's so fine. Okay. Come out. Come out wherever you are. You better fucking retract that statement right the fuck now. I take it back. I take it back. <laughs> okay, That's from the house money. Yes. <laughs> What's your fun fact? Um, that billy goats pee on their heads. <laughs> they have like what? other goats pee on their heads so they could attract females. Oh, well, billy goats and I have that in common, baby. <laughs> what the fuck is that about? Do you remember that fucking sticker with that little boy on it and he had his pants down and he'd be pissing on something? Oh, on the back. What it's the like fuck a decal. Was that? Yeah. I don't know. It was like the edgy decal. It was yeah. like, fuck that this. That was a weird then, time. Yeah, the 2000s, my dude. I still <laughs> see some cars with it. Um, I have a dave matthews decal yeah, on my sure car do. And it's, i look like a douchebag kind of that's fine. um and carly and my brother have salt life on the back which is like a, it's like a beach surfing company i think but it looks at a glance because of the text it looks like slut life so we always call it <laughs> slut life we love that for them we love a slut life okay you guys we're gonna do a quiz a quiz quiz a little bit uh, 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 We're gonna do uh, which 90s bitch are you? Okay. I, what happened to Clueless? We could do it on Clueless. Okay, let's do this 90s bitch. I'm ready for it. Oh, yeah. I got a lot of editing to do on this episode, ladies <laughs> and gents. As we were still talking to it, making more things. I know. You guys won't notice because I had to cut a lot of shit out, but uh, we are running on probably 45 minutes of useless audio uh, for you and your ugly friends to not hear. What a babe. Okay, which. 90s bitch are you okay <laughs> go ahead and read the first one okay so it says pick a 90s boy toy jonathan taylor thomas leonardo dicaprio jared leto joshua jackson usher he has herpes now so don't pick him um mark paul gosler gosler will smith ryan Philippi, um devin sawa devin Ooh. sawa so cute he's sorry cute um, um i'm gonna pick will smith okay I'm stuck between Ryan Phillippe and... Uh... I'm thinking about how they look now. No, it's a, pick a 90s boy toy, right? Are we supposed to put ourselves in that mindset? You're right. Okay, then if I'm picking a, ni- between a 90s boy toy, I'm going to pick either Ryan Phillippe or Devin Sawa. I'm going to do Devin Sawa. Okay, I'm going to do Leonardo DiCaprio because I have a t-shirt with his face on it. Okay. What is your fashion sense? Shoulder pads, mini skirts, anything expensive. Fake baby bumps. What the Me. Fuck? Preppy, goth, jeans and sneakers, evening gowns, or cheer squad uniform. I'm going to say mini skirts. I'm going to say goth. I mean, like, I'm not goth, but I I only... <laughs> oh, you've seen my wardrobe. That's true. I'm wearing a, a green Playboy hoodie right now, and this is the most Color colorful thing I've got going on. Pick a bitchy quote. I'm going to do you the way you did me, and when I'm done, all you'll be left with is a proverbial proverbial wish that you've never been born wow what are you gonna teach me when you fail in life advanced loser being Ooh. what a fucking tearjerker look it's like turns from endearment part three only this time the boyfriend's gay <laughs> <laughs> he was all over me he was everywhere now you live with that for the rest of your putrid for the rest of your putrid little life putrid does look like a weird it looks like Pute protrude. I do not wear polyester hair, okay? Unlike some people I know, like Shawana. <laughs> okay. You know, if I were as pathetic as you are, I would have killed myself years ago. You should get on with it. Yikes. Oh my god, these last two were very problematic, Jesus. I know making Dylan choose between me and Kelly seemed like a bizarre thing to do, but I never thought it was a contest. I never thought I would lose. Wow, I was believing that for a second. Everybody loves me, and I intend to keep it that way. 
Love? What's love got to do with it? I'm having a wedding. I'm going to do everybody loves me and I intend on keeping it that way. And then I'm going to like walk away and I slam my locker because I'm talking to Kelly. And I slam my locker and I clutch my trapper keeper close to my chest because I'm late for cheer squad. I'm going to say, you know, if I were as pathetic as you. Maybe not. What? (laughs) Why? Okay, you can pick whatever. This one's really got you, huh? It does because I'm the most bitchy one is that one. That is really bitchy. But it's your bitchy quote. So which would you say? You would. I feel like that would be the one you wouldn't say. I would not say that. I do so not fuck with that. So scrap that. Okay. I'm gonna do you the way you did me. That one. Okay. Perfect. You wish you were never born. Okay. Uh, how do you handle enemies? I love how you had to read all that shit, and okay. I'm just like, how do you handle enemies? <laughs> Fire <laughs> them. Kill them. Uh, re- what is that word? Recent. 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 Recent party invites. Steal their lover, sass them, cast spells, spread rumors, sleep with them, or smile to their face. I'm I do say, all of this. I'm going to say cast spells, baby. I want to say cast spells, but I also want to say steal their lover that I do with spells. Whatever you want to do. I'm pretty sure the quote I picked was from Jawbreaker, and that's funny because there's a Jawbreaker picture. I don't know what quote I picked was from. I don't know what that's from either. I'm going to say cast my fucking spell. Hey, yeah. How do you feel about popsicles? I'm on a diet. Oh. Sticky and sweet. Oh. I prefer eight inches. <laughs> Are we talking about snacks? If you mean penis, I'm not into guys. No, really. Is this about dick? <laughs> Wait, I love all these. That is so funny. I'm going to say if somebody asks me about a popsicle, it's not where my head goes. That's where mine goes. I would be like, are we talking about snacks? Because if you're about to pick up a popsicle, can you pick me up some uh, flaming Hot Cheetos while you're at it? Um, okay. What would your friend's superlative be? Okay. The one who really can't drive. The one who only wears black. Okay, that nailed us already. All you're right. the first one on the set. That's Literally. it. Literally. <laughs> okay. Um, okay. Uh, the one who studied abroad. The one who slept with her stepbrother. Uh, the one who is nicer than she looks, the one who fires everyone, the one who killed her best friend, the one whose fiance died bungee jumping, or the one who had an Elvis themed wedding. I'm going to go with the one who only wears black. I'm going to say the one who can't drive. Who are you? Wow. I am Nancy Downs from The Craft. Hey, bitch. Uh, okay. So some people might call you evil, but you know who would never? Satan. Ha. Uh, and that's why you worship the dark arts Me. and punish lesser bitches with wicked spells. It's only because we said cast spells. If looking good in black makes you a bitch, then so be it. So be it. That wow. was fun. That was fun. Even though she uh, did not end well in that movie. Right. No insane. spoiler alerts. Well, thank you guys so much for listening. I don't know if we said it, but you've been listening to Esoteric Oddities. Thanks, I'm Jonathan. Guys. That's I'm Sarah. Sarah. Uh, make sure you follow us on Instagram. We will be posting pictures and such uh, from today's episode. You're not going to want to miss it. Also, follow us on Twitter at Esoteric Oddity, O-D-D-I-T-I-E. Follow us on Facebook, on everywhere, MySpace, Google, Google Hangouts, Club Penguin, all of it. We'll see you there. Thanks, guys. Thanks for listening. Bye.